My name is Paul McWilliams and I'm the Technical Innovation and Product Manager for Terex Washing Systems. From the H30, the material is transferred up to the main rinsing screen on the Agusan 206 via this main conveyor. The main conveyor is one meter wide with a heavy duty belt and it's powered by dual 11 kilowatt motors and gearboxes. This allows it to convey material up to a tonnage of well over 500 tons per hour without any issues. We deliberately run this conveyor at a low angle of 18 degrees and with a lower speed. And the reason for that is to avoid any potential rollback or material slippage when you're dealing with rounded material or even very wet material. An option that's available on this main conveyor is that you can get an overband magnet at this position. Now in natural applications like this, it's not really required, but in the recycling applications, that's very much required to remove any tramp metal or any rebar or material like that when they get into the, the feed material. When the material makes its way up to the top of the main conveyor, it hits the wash box where water is introduced for the first time. Now, in a few minutes, I'll take you up there and show you exactly what's going on. But first, I'm going to discuss with you how the water is managed to deliver to the plant in the first place. With independent supplies required for the rinser screen, the wash box, and the fresh water supply to the Agri Scrub 150, this ring main has been designed to specifically manage the distribution of multiple water flows where pressure is needed in all situations. Computational fluid dynamics has been used to make sure that the pressure losses within this system is minimized. And each valve has individual speed or flow controls to ensure the right balance of water in each part of the plant while not losing pressure. While it's important to manage the water during the operation of the machine, it's also vital to control your water during winter time. And what I mean by that is during uh, very cold nights and frost, it's important to drain down this part of the machine to make sure that you don't lose, get any damage through frost, through water buildup. Therefore, the Agrisan has been designed with multiple drain down points so that you can drain down each part of the manifold and each part of the sump tank, either at the end of a week or at each night to make sure the water doesn't build up in those areas. Now let's go up and see the wash box part of the wash plant. The high capacity wash box momentarily holds the material back while we introduce a high volume of water fluidizing the material so that it can be uniformly presented onto the 20 by 6 screen. You will see that the, the water supply to this wash box is independently controlled so you can manage the amount of water that's delivered at this point. Soaking the material effectively at this point is essential to achieve really effective screening across all three decks of the screen. Now, on the 20 by 6 screen box itself, each deck is fitted with nine spray bars. And you can see here that each spray bar is controlled by an individual boat control valve. This allows you to manage the amount of water that you're using on the screen box. And what I mean by that is towards the discharge end where the material is already clean, you can shut off a few valves and just let the material flow on down, get as dry as possible before it's discharged into the sump house. Another feature of our spray bar system is that they're all statically mounted to the manifold, which is mounted to the sump frame. And we refer to this as isolated spray bars. So that means that the spray bar itself is not moving with the screen. So that means that the lifespan of your spray bar is massively increased. There's no risk of it vibrating and cracking or shaking off. So this is a really good feature. And these theaters help contain all the water that's inside the screen box. Now as the material makes its way down the screen, it is separated into three sizes. You've got your oversize, your mid-grade overs, and your bottom deck overs. While all your sand and water is flushed down through the bottom deck into the collection sump underneath. So we've just turned off the machine for a few moments so it can explain to you more about the 20 by 6 screen box on this agri sand and also explain some of the features. So the 20 by 6 screen box is a proven and high performance screen box. We put polyurethane media on each deck and as I explained earlier, your aggregates are split into those three sizes and they make their way down to this rolling chute, which is, for me, one of the best features on the machine. So in normal mode, the oversized material goes down over the top of this chute, the middle deck overs go over this part of the chute, and the bottom deck overs go down into the bottom chute, out to the three conveyors. But one of the great features is that you can actually blend the middle and bottom deck material by just simply adjusting this plate like this. And from this point, the middle deck overs deflect back down into the bottom chute, allowing your middle deck 
and your bottom deck overs all to go together. So it's very common in recycling and scrubbing applications where this material would all go to the scrub to get a proper cleaning. You can actually then, in the oversize shoot, also change the position of the, the bolt-in plates. So they also can allow the top deck material, middle deck material, and the bottom deck material all to go to the, the one side conveyor. Another great benefit of this rolling chute is the fact that it rolls away. And you'll see at Terex, we provide drop-in flooring like this, which makes it easy for the operator then to get in and do inspection of the chutes, but also then look at what's going on in the screen box. So you can see that once you're in this area, you have great access to the front of the screen box. So if you ever need to replace these dis line discharge lips, it's easy to get in here and operate. You're standing on a nice safe platform. Um, and also if you need to get up and do any inspection on the spray bars, etc., there's plenty of space here for the guys to um, look in and also inspect the media. So now we're gonna get the rolling chute closed up and get the machine back and running again. Here the customer is running 55 millimeter apertures on the top deck, 24 millimeter apertures on the middle deck, and he has got the bottom deck split in the two sands, two millimeters in the first portion and five millimeters in the second portion. The plus 55 millimeter material goes out this conveyor, and as we can see today, there's not a lot of that material in this feed material. The 24 to 55 then goes out this side, where he's getting a good quality drainage stone, well rinsed, nice and clean. And then the 5 to 24 makes its way up the mid overs belt towards the agri scrub. As I mentioned previously, all the sand that's washed down through the bottom deck of the 20 by 6 screen is split into two sections at this point. The not the two sand in this first section, and the not the five sand in the second section. The not the five sand is distributed into the far side of the tank, and the not the two is distributed to the near side of the tank. At this point, it's joined with the dirty water from the Agri Scrub 150, which comes back in through the pipework and goes into the coarse side of the tank to make sure we're not contaminating the fine sand. At this point, on the catch box, you have the ability to blend the amount of not the three millimeter material that is blended into your not the five millimeter material. And there's the first of three places on this plant where you have the ability to control that. That not only allows you to control the spec of your not the two and not the five sand, but it also allows you to balance the loading on your cyclones. From this collection sump, or within this collection sump, sorry, there's protective mats to make sure that no oversized material can make its way through the pumps that might cause some damage. This is done by a rubber mats that are down at the far side of the tank underneath the water. Also within the tank, there's a float system that allows you to bring some of the cyclone overflow water back down into the tank, and the float acts like a ball cock to ensure the water level in the tank contains the same, and it reduces the risk of the pumps running dry should there be a shortage of water. Now we're going ahead down to the ground level to talk about the pumps. The pumps used on the AgriSand and across the entire Terex washing system range are the Linotex Lina pump. These pumps are regarded as the best in the industry in terms of their wear resistance to pumping sand and water. The reason that is, they use an actual red rubber within the pump that lines the entire inside and the impeller, and both those parts are replaceable as well. Um, down here you'll see that we've got both sand pumps, the coarse sand pump and the fine sand pump, and both pump up to the cyclones, which we'll come to in a little minute. Now another feature on the agri sand, which is quite unique, is that we've got this frame that allows you to get into maintenance the pump, and I'm just going to demonstrate how that's so easy to drop down. So by dropping out these retention pins on this side, And this side. You can let this little spring release down, which allows you to safely drop the frame down to the ground. Then disconnect the suction hose. So this frame allows you then to roll this pump out into a safe location where you can work at it freely around it from all the different angles. That's if you ever need to open up the pump for inspection to check for any blockages or if you need to replace any of the liners of the impeller which is very rare as these pumps can last for years without needing any change to those components. Now I'm going to take you up to the upper part of the agri sand to show you the, the cyclones and the features up there. From the pumps, the two fractures of sand are pumped up to these two large cyclones mounted above the dewatering screen. The higher volume force fraction is pumped to this 660 cyclone on the far side and the, the smaller 0 to 2 fraction is pumped to the 500 cyclone on this side. 
inside the cyclo, silt and clay is separated and discharged through the top of the cyclone while an inspect sand is discharged through the bottom of the cyclone and collected in this collection box. The inlet pressure to each cyclone is monitored by an electric electronic pressure sensor on the inlet band which is read back to the HMI. As well as that, on the, district, or in the collection box we have an easy to open lid that allows you to open up and take a quick inspection to see what the underflow is like out of the cyclone because it's key that the, the discharge is like an umbrella to get so the cyclone isn't getting overloaded and choking where you may lose good sand into the sub tank. Now, also in this collection box, it's our second opportunity to blend the not the three millimeter sand into the not the five millimeter sand. And that's done by this very easy little box underneath that allows you to slide it backwards or forwards. Bring it this way, we bring all the not the two sand to this side. Pushing it that way, blends all the not the two into the not the five into one side of the screen. And that's actually how the customer is running today. He's looking to make as much zero to five as possible. From this underflow collection box, the material is distributed nice and uniformly onto the dewatering screen. And as you see inside the dewatering screen, we're running polyurethane dewatering media, typically 500 micron. And the aim here is to get the, the sand as dry as possible, typically into a region below 14% moisture. In the the water screen you'll see that there's a divider up the middle so this ensures that you keep the not the five and the not the two material separate and this can be repositioned depending on the volumes that you're running so you could have a two to four split or four to two split or as we see today a three to three split this 14 to 60 water screen is described as high frequency very short throw but very aggressive and that helps the material move along the mats uh, efficiently while giving them every opportunity to release that water that water is released into the catch box below and that all flows back into the primary sump tank. Maximizing the maximum recovery of all the good sand material that you want to eventually end up in your stockpiles. Now at the end of the watering screen we have a two grade chute. This chute has been customized for this particular customer. Because the 0 to 5 product is very much its dominant product, the, the not to 2 material is operating the standard AgriSan type radial conveyor which is about 30 foot long. But on the other side, we've an extended chute that has allowed us to put in one of our 50, 50 32 conveyors, which is 50 foot long, giving them a, great, a very large stockpile capacity for us not to five sand. On this chute also is your last opportunity to, to blend in that zero to two into your zero to five sand. So that's three places in total across the agri sand, which gives us lots of flexibility for managing your flow to each part of the plant, but also to manage that stack of material right at the very last minute. Now, with our inspect sand discharging in the stockpiles behind us, the dirty water is now going to be discharged into this box and eventually make its way out this pipe into our ground sump. Here it's also joined by some slight overflow water from our central collection tank. And from this point, it's going to go on to our water management process. 